Hello everybody and welcome to the first look of the Alpine Farming Expansion in Farming Simulator 19 from Sparky20. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the new Alpine Expansion that just dropped on November 12th of 2020. So we're going to take a little bit of an in-depth first look at it. I will be doing a Let's Play series on this new map and DLC. And yeah, I'm going to just try to showcase everything as best as I can. And yeah, let's get started. So to start off with, I want to take a moment just to appreciate and take in the level of quality this map has. First of all, they added a lot of buildings, which, to be honest, this, just the addition of a map, feels, this DLC feels like the Platinum Edition, what it should have been. The, this should have been what Platinum Edition is, because they added a whole new aspect of the electric tractors, but the map is just incredibly detailed, like, they added a lot of really extensive buildings like this giant mansion but the amount of like detail like this instead of painting these rock features they actually like hand modeled it pretty much which is really incredible because like the amount of terrain variation on this map is truly incredible so in the areas where there's it's sparse I'm just gonna fly pretty fast but even like right here just this little bridge is incredible. It's just, it's so, it's really picturesque of the amount of, like, beauty this map has. I mean, look at this. Just the amount of winding roads. This, even like, if you look, take a look here, the grass texture, the fact that they added a few wildflowers into the grass is really cool. Now the map border is, like, right here, so it changes, so it doesn't look quite as good. But just the level of detail and like the trees and everything is just truly breathtaking. The amount of detail and time that giants put into this. So down here you can see the road does loop around. It's really just a snake of roads. I mean you can see, like, just appreciate for a minute to the north there. I think that's the north on this map. There's the amount of like terrain variation just to model a hill like this, like to build a hill up this detailed by hand is with giants editor software is really a lot more challenging than you'd think i mean the just the little village like the town is just a work of art and i know that you know it's like a base game map and it's wide open but that's what makes it cool because they added a lot more terrain variation than normal like in most in-game maps yeah there's a bit of terrain variance but this is just incredible, the amount of detail, and there isn't a BGA on this, but there are a few cell points, and generally, it's just a beautiful map. So over here, we have the farmyard, and you do start out, if you start a new farmer, with cows, so that's a pretty nice little detail, and some manure, actually. And the farm, is just it's just beautiful. Like, up here is the steepest hillsides I, I'm going to find them in the let's play but I mean it's just beautiful the amount of detail I mean it's just it's so much to take in you just wanna like spend hours just looking at all the beauty I mean it's just I'm breathtaken by the literal quality this is the one DLC besides the Anderson one that's really made me excited to be honest it's just the amount of detail is incredible like even the rock slides is just beautiful like this is where the pedestrian mower would be really good which I will get into here but I mean just look at the view I know my render distance isn't very high but I mean for I think this is a 1x map I think if we just take a look so you have a lot more grassland but like the fields are in the lowland but I mean it's a pretty good sized map now I'm pretty sure it's a 1x but either way we're gonna go onto the ground and just drive around in the village a bit but that's just a quick little aerial tour and let's get onto the ground now and take a closer look all right so we bought a John Deere Gator just to do the tour in and we do have a dealership here I really like the little circular windows so we have the dealer here and we're just gonna go through the town and take a look at each cell point so we're gonna go up to the left here around this roundabout it's just so just picturesque 
the amount of detail this has. So we're going to pull into this cell point. This is the spinnery, it looks like. So this is where you can... Actually, this might not be. It's hard to read this section because of how tight it is. Okay, this is the spinnery. Never mind, I'm right. So we'll go over here now. I'm just going to cut the corner there. Again, beautiful map. There's a nice park here. I like that. That building really has like the open arches is really cool. And here we have the restaurant, it looks like. Yep. So you have the restaurant, cell point it's for grain, it looks like. We're going to head up to the other cell point up here. It's just beautiful. I wish they would have added different traffic vehicles, which I know is kind of a lot to ask for. Okay, so, oh, it's cool. That's a tunnel. I like that. So here we have the the chocolatier. I'm not sure exactly what you would sell here, but we have a chocolatier place. So that's pretty cool. And I like the tunnels. Just adds a little more like detail. We have here the railroad siloed west. So this is where you can load your grain onto a train to dump off. And we have a train coming right here. So I think the train is the same one that's in Fells. Burn. Yep, you can see that normal train. I like the train crossings, how they're a little different than uh, the ones from the other countries. And again, just the amount of detail in the rocks is just beautiful. And the river, just, it's breathtaking. So we have here the, we have the sawmill and the lime station. So you can buy your lime here. And that's where you get the line, it looks like. The fence, it's just, the level of terrain variance is so beautiful. Oh, there's a real life brand of uh, plastic models in real life. They make like, they make some Pinewood Derby cars and a lot of plastic die, like model cars. So we'll head up here to this, looks like a, either a hotel or a little housing area. Again, the just the amount of like variance in terrain and the roads is just beautiful. Yep, we have a little bike area, parking lot. So that is a nice little bit of detail there. Just look at the grandness for a minute. Just take a moment to appreciate here the just the amount of like beauty in these amazing hotels. We'll go back down there in a minute. I'm gonna head up to the farm area first, but it's just, it's just so incredible, really. I mean, I know I'm saying this a lot, but it's the first time I've seen a map in 19 that is a DLC because this is the first map that has had or DLC that's had a map, and I'm just over the moon with that they added one, and I wish that this would have been added sooner as the platinum edition of the game, but. Now we have at least something instead. So up here we have more housing it looks like. Some more little houses. The residential houses, I like that they're not closed off like they were in Fellsburn so you can actually like, if you wanted to roleplay having a house somewhere to start off with like for roleplay or whatever, it's just a cool idea to have the houses be able to be driven up to. So up here we have some fields. We are up by fields 25, 24, 23, and some grassland. And I'm not going to go too far up that way, but from the distance you can at least appreciate the level of uh, variation in detail. I already flew up there, so we don't really need to um, visit that in too much detail. More housing down there. It looks like just a line of homes. So up here we have the steeper incline. I think this loops around. Yeah, it does. Just the climb is really nice and all like the detail. Like if I just pull off to the side here, the walls, how they're all like supported really nicely. And I'm not sure what uh, country this is based in, but I'm pretty sure it's based somewhere I would, in Europe, obviously, but it's probably like Switzerland, I would guess. So I'm going to head back down to the farm area and we'll 
keep going down there. So we're heading down to the farm here, and from what I can tell, there's not much area to really log trees. They have added a few different types of trees now, more variants in the trees, which I like. I don't like foresting these uh, trees because of all the branches, but other than that, I mean, there's not a ton of forest that you can log like close to the farm, but there is a little bit of forest, which is nice to have for your forestry, and you can always turn a field probably into some agroforestry land. So over there we have another train depot it looks like. We'll take a look at that. And we're heading up to the farm now. Alright, so here's the farm a little closer. We have the starting equipment. You have the sickle mower, the truck, the little electric tractor, the linder, and the viewer. I will be taking a closer look at this in the Let's Play, but I will showcase the new machines that have been added. We have a nice shed here, grain storage, silage bunker on site, which is really nice to see. All your equipment for doing cows. And now we're going to head back down into the town and tour that real quick. The other half I didn't get to yet, so we'll head over there. So here we have what looks like a gas station for fueling up your fuel-powered tractors. And the one thing on the farm is they do provide an electric charging station, so that's how they made that system work. I like this little metro area. It's nice and just adds detail for when you drive around. Down there we have the grain mill and another lime station. Down there, we have some more fields, more commercial stuff, some housing up here. And it's hard to get it all on the video, but I'm trying to get as much in for you guys so you can just get a feel for the map. And so far, I would say at least the map side of it, I would definitely recommend this DLC. The class one, it was okay, but this is just a new level of awesome. We have some parking garages underground. That's a nice little detail. We have some more housing. A lot of housing on this map actually, which is pretty cool to look at. And we're going to head over to the other side where that big uh, hotel is. But look at this. Just take a moment to appreciate like how much it took just to hand model this into the game. Because th this is all pretty much from scratch from what I can tell. I mean, all you have is like the machines that they add, they put in. I mean, the rock walls, the textures, you can tell it's 2D, but it also does look 3D. 3D. But, I'm really enjoying touring this map. And using a slower vehicle like the Gator is nice, because you can actually like take your time and look at everything. Again, the rocks are just incredible. So we have another hotel here, and I'm going to head over back the other way to the other hotel, and I'll catch you guys when I get over there. Alright, so the last stop here on our tour of the map is the, uh, basically the super hotel, the ginormous one. And this is not really, probably the steepest hill I've found so far. The gator is struggling a little bit. So I'm going to pull up here to the place, more housing again, as you can see. Yeah, that was quite the climb. I haven't seen a map with that steep of a hill in a while. So down here you have the hotel. Very elegant. It's probably worth like 50 million dollars. And you can see if you look at it, like the rooms look 3D, which is kind of cool to look at. You can actually like see nice detailed rooms instead of a just like it doesn't look 2D. It actually looks pretty 3D, which is kind of cool. Alright, so we've All right, so we finished touring the map now, and we're going to take a look at the machines and equipment that came with the Alpine DLC. So we're going to start out with probably the one thing that got a lot of hype in the beginning is this AV Sickle Bar Mower. It is gas powered, and we'll just turn it on here. No work lights, just some reflectors, and if you notice, all the handlebars controls work. But the one thing 
that I really like is the fact that the player walks because with a lot of mods that were created a lot of the time the player would just move around and it would be better to be in cab where now you can actually be out of cab and it looks actually nice so that's the AB sickle bar mower next we're gonna take a look here at the Riggy Track SK So that's the AB Sickle Bar Mower, and real quick here, we're going to take a look at it in the store. It is under mowers, it's $14,000. You can go for wide tires, spiked roller, spiked roller wide, or standard. So that's the AB 66. Next here we have the Riggy Track SKE 50 Electric. This is the only electric tractor in the DLC. It is fully electric there is a charging station up at the farm that you get to keep your machine charged and you can only hear the motor noise but front and rear three points we have all working lights signals everything like that it is 68 horsepower and one thing I've noticed is the pure smallness this thing has I mean it's one of the smallest tractors I've seen with a cab in FS that isn't like a compact tractor. So we have the Riggy Track SK50. We'll take a look at it in the store. $49,500. We have the choice of color, which is something that all Riggy Track models have. You can get blue, you can get red, you can get any color you really want. So that's a cool feature you can get. You can get Mitas tires, which you can't change anything about. You can get Trello board, which you can have standard, twin wheels, which is probably good for like side hills or standard. So that's the SKE50. Next up we have the Riggy Track SKH75. This is the middle size tractor in the Riggy Track line of machinery that comes with the DLC. And these two here are gas models or fuel. So we'll hop into it here. And one thing I've noticed with these is how the front tires are bigger than the rear ones. I'm thinking this is probably for more of the steep inclines and that sort of thing. An interesting thing I noticed is the exhaust is on the left, unlike being on the right, or driver's right, I guess I should say. The hood, the general geometry of the machine is kind of, it's weird to look at, but also intriguing and the bigger models do have all-wheel steer and this one is kitted with a loader both the big one of the two larger sized ones can have that all the lights work again and we will take a look at it in the store the SKH 75 82500 we have front loader or no front loader again full color customization we have standard wheels for Michelin or twins and there you can see the real size difference in the wheels and tires twins or standard with uh, trail Midas actually you can have twin wheels or standard which are a little narrower on the extensions so it's a narrower wheelbase we have that so that's the SKH 75 next up is the Riggy Track SKH 1 50. Again, this one is fuel powered and not electric. And all the lights work. Pretty much the same as the other one down there, but this one, again, is higher powered. All wheel steer, yet again, and front and rear three point. And it looks like it does have diesel exhaust fluid on it because of the blue cap. Everything works like you would expect. So we'll take a look at it here in the store once I get it parked again. And we'll just do that. So we have here the SKH 150. We have, again, color customization, Trelleborg, standard or twin. We have for Michelin, we have standard, twin, or standard again. Mitas, again, same thing. Front loader, no front loader. And that is the SKH 150. Next up, we have the AVTT 281 Plus. So here's an interesting thing I've thought about when I first saw this. If you kept up with like the American Compact Tractor Market, you will have heard of uh, 
possibly heard of the brand Ventrac. And when I saw this, I was thinking about Ventrac. I'll throw a picture on the screen because with Ventrax, they would do really well in this area because of the fact of the twin wheels and the extra stability on hills. And there's just a wide variety of attachments. I'll put a link to Ventrac in the description so you can see what I'm talking about. So we have this AV here, all wheel steer, full lights, and we also have a front and rear three point. This is primarily meant for mowing, but you could have a smaller attachment on the back. So we'll take a look at it in the store here. It is under small tractors. Everything in this DLC is in the small tractor category. $92,000 we have uh, the choice of any color you want, which is another nice feature. We have choice of Mitas tires with standard, wide, or twins. And there's a different variance in tread you can see. And standard again. With Trellibor, you can see standard or lawn tires, which are a little chunkier and more of a lawn friendly pattern. And we're back to Mitas. So that is the AVTT281 Plus. Next up we have the Buer 6105. This is a diesel powered tractor, open station. This is the oldest tractor in the DLC. And it has lights, no cab on this one. It's also the only open station machine. And we have only a rear three point linkage on this one. So pretty basic, just a good workhorse for running a feed mixer or whatever and that's pretty much it there's nothing really crazy about it no all-wheel steer it is four-wheel drive which is nice so we're going to take a look at it you will remember this tractor in fs15 and 13 i think when it had the cab on it 39,005 39,000 starting price you can have trelleborg standard wide and then we have michelin just wide tires so that is the buer 6105 Next up we have the final tractor for the tractor category. We have the Lindner tractor here. So this one is kind of special because there isn't a beacon, but in fact there is actually cool flashing lights, so that's kind of a fun feature to have. And you can see on the cab it has the rear brake light up there, so that's a nice little feature. Again, all-wheel steer, and this has a front and rear three-point. Nice modern design. This is the updated version of the one that you would have seen in, I believe, FS17 and 15. I'm not positive on that one. Very nice little tractor. Good workhorse for general purpose. And this is powered by fuel and not electricity. And we have a nice clean interior with a buddy seat. So we're going to take a look at it here in the store. We have Lindner Lintrack 130, 105,500 starting price. You can pick a few colors. You can have blue, yellow, orange, green, white, black, and gray. So the colors are a lot more limited for the Lintrack, and then you can change the wheels to any color you would like. So you have Torellaborg, but you can have standard, wide, and that's that for that. We have Michelin just wide, Nokian just for the communal tires, and then you can have a front loader or no front loader. Next up we have the Lindner Lintrack little pickup truck kind of thing. It's not really a pickup but it's just your general workhorse little road use vehicle. Rear th PTO you can have a rear three point on this ag tires on this, you can have a front PTO, full hookups, and then this also has all the lights working, just beacons, so not the fancy flashing lights. We'll just turn it on. This would be a good vehicle for just generally smaller jobs like moving a tanker. It does have a variety of attachments I will show here. Pretty quick little machine, which is nice to have for a, a general road vehicle so you can see I have the attachment st staged up we are hitting that more a little bit you can have a flatbed which can hold 3,000 liters of grain your manure spreader or your 
uh, slurry spreader. All these can fit to the back of this lint track. So we'll just throw this on to give an idea. All have their own man mounting posts to hold them up off the ground. So that is the Linner Uni track. So here is the one trailer that really came with the DLC, which is kind of cool to see that they added some sort of utility trailer to the game in a DLC. This is something I haven't really seen before, but this is a Bachman trailer, and this is a pretty high class one. So if I just pull ahead here, you can see that you can fold down the sides so that you can load up pallets or whatever. But the cool feature for loading is you can unfold the ramp, but the whole thing tips up to give uh, easier input, like the ramp, less of a bend in it. So what we'll do is we'll just load the sickle bar mower because this is what that was intended for so that you could transport it because the sickle bar can only go five miles an hour or as fast as you can walk. So as you can see here, the ramp is barely, uh, it's, there's a slight lip to it, but I think the reason they made the tilt on this specific one for the game is because of the use for the mower. And you can fully strap down the machine to the trailer, which is a really nice feature so it doesn't slide around. It's nice to see that giants are starting to implement that strapping of vehicles down into the base game stuff. Good little trailer. It's just a generally good sized trailer for a pickup and it makes a truck a lot more usable if you are on console where you can't really get as many of the utility trailers. So that is the Bachman utility trailer. Moving on to our tillage equipment, we have the Pottinger Servo 25 three bottom reversible plow. This is a pretty small size plow for the general sizes of plows, but good for this amount of equipment size that you get with the Alpine DLC. So a nice little plow, it would probably work good on the mid to larger range rigging track. Next we have the Pottinger Toronto. Uh, 3001. Nice little cultivating disc for tilling up your soil for your fields. Again, this is for a slightly higher horsepower tractor. The little riggy track would not be able to pull this. Next we have the Pottinger Synchro 3020 uh, cultivator so that you can do a lot less tillage and general erosion to the soil. And that's pretty much everything for the tillage category of the DLC. Next up we have the only seed drill or planter added. We have the Pottinger Aerosim 3002 ADD. Pretty small drill but gets the job done for the smaller fields. And again, the small riggy track isn't able to really power this just because of the pure size and weight. And yeah, just pretty basic drill. Pretty similar to ones that have been in the game in previous. But that's only the only drill you really get, so we'll move on to the next category. Next up we have the balers. So it's basically the same baler here. We have the Impress 125F Pro, which is the non-auto wrapping baler. Pretty nice sized baler. It's nice to see a new baler added to the game. And you probably could power this with a smaller tractor, but you would need some horsepower behind it. There's not a lot you can actually do with the Riggy track, the smallest one, which is kind of a sad thing, but it just makes it, I guess, a lot... It's not as fun not being able to use the electric tractor, but you still have it for something. So we have the Impress 125 FC Pro, which is the model that has the bale wrapper, and what's cool is you can actually get a thing in addition to it where it'll actually stand the bale on end because if you're working in the mountains the bales could roll away so it's basically just an extended version of the smaller model so these are the two balers in the pack next up we have the new loading wagons so we have the pottinger boss alpin 251 this is the smallest uh loading wagon that they have added pretty simple little loading wagon not too big you could probably pull this with something like this riggy track, the mid-range one, or the Bure. We have the Euroboss 330T, slightly bigger capacity, probably more power it would need. And then we have the Faro 4010, which you might not be able to power with even the largest tractor just because of the pure size of it. 
but it's nice to have some variety and options so you can have a budget one or a slightly bigger one or the biggest one you can get. So these are the three loading wagons in the DLC. Next up we have our wind rowers. So we have here this side uh, movement wind rower made by SIP, the favorite 254. This is pretty much just a simple, cheap uh, wind rower that moves it to one side. Basic little wind rower, you could power it with a pretty small machine. Next up we have the SIP uh, multi-directional Air 300F Alp. This can move it to whatever direction you want. It's kind of like a merger if you've ever seen one of those. So it just, you can choose the direction you want the grass to be moved to. Next we have the Pottinger Top 342. This is a small uh, impeller style wind rower. This is just a simple little model that you could easily pull with something pretty small. And then we have the Pottinger Top 612C. This is a slightly larger wind rower, but surprisingly the horsepower requirements for it are able to be met by the smallest Riggy Track 50. So you could pull this with the Riggy Track, but on the same time, at the same time, you also have a lot less of a load when you're just rowing some hay together. So these are the four little wind rowers you get. Next up we have your tethers. So you have the Alpin HT 4.4H by Pottinger. We have a pretty basic one. There's already a tether like this in game, just a different brand. Then we have the Pottinger Hit 8.9T. Slightly larger one that you could use when you're upgrading, but a small one isn't too bad to use. So these are the only two tethers that are really in the DLC, but again, not like you need a tether a lot, so it's not like it's a big use item. So we're going to move on to the next thing. So for the final category of machinery that's been added, we're going to take a look at the mowers. We have the Pottinger Nova Alpin 261. This is the second biggest one, or second smallest one in the pack. This is a pretty simple front-mounted mower, just a good one to put on this if you're upgrading from the the Sepp Kunzel F240, which is the smallest mower in the DLC, and it is on the uh, AV machine right now, so that you can just see what it looks like on a machine. And again, it's just a simple small mower, nothing too crazy. And then here's the pair of butterfly mowers you get. So you get the Pottinger Novacat 301 Alpha Motion Master. So I'm assuming this is the upgraded model of the previous Novacats that are in the game. You have the, mo the 301, and then you have the uh, Batwing that goes with it, the Nova Disc 812. So that's pretty much all the equipment in the DLC. I will show a little bit in action here in some cinematics. So enjoy that, and we'll see you at the outro.
Alright, so this is going to be the end of the video here. I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to consider leaving a like and subscribing. And check out the link in the description. I will have the DLC linked down below. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will be making a Let's Play on this map. If you want to see that, be sure to hit the bell and subscribe button so you can know when I post that, which will be coming very soon. And yeah, guys, until the next video, I will see you all later. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.